you might want to think twice before interviewing with any of these companies. As you all know, we begin construction today on our next candy systems and research superstore. First order of business to suss out the competition. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 movie corporations that would be hell to work for. For this list, we're taking a look at the movie businesses with horrific bosses, terrible working conditions, or the worst job descriptions you're ever likely to see. Today, Starbucks offers premium quality coffee at affordable prices. Delish. They can also be places that are just unpleasant or that you wouldn't enjoy working at. However, we're ruling out military jobs, as they are inherently perilous. We're also excluding awful workplaces from real life that have been put on the big screen, such as Stratton Oakmont. And then there's a big target and we they get launched at the target, they yeah, stick. Right? There's a bullseye yes, yes. and the bullseye is a dollar sign. Whoever gets closer to the dollar sign gets the most points. And finally, a spoiler alert is in order. But I never said you have a job. Meat. I'll send you a nice box of Christmas meat. Best I can do, get out of here. Number 10, InGen the Jurassic Park franchise. InGen is my responsibility now, Doctor, and I will jealously defend its interests. To be fair, this bioengineering company started by John Hammond has come very close to perfecting the concept of a dinosaur-themed tourist attraction. But they always get one thing wrong. Security. Trees, go, go! No matter how hard they try, the dinos can never be contained and are always desperate for a quick snack. Whether you're security personnel, the company's CEO, or a lowly hot dog vendor, you'll never be completely safe at any InGen facility. The company doesn't even pay its employees very well. Case in point, Dennis Nedry felt that he was underpaid and eventually got gobbled up trying to steal valuable embryos. Maybe just go to the Dino Workers Union next time, Dennis. Kevin, I'd love to see him try. Sorry about your financial problems, Dennis. I really am, but they are your problems. Oh, you're right, John. You're absolutely right. Number nine, Armadime Corp. Elysium. I work at Armadime. I'm a line, you know, working my way Ray, up. they need you up on the third floor. Some things never change. Even in 2154, massive corporations are still walking all over the little guy. Hey, you're holding up the line. No, 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 I got a jam. Health and safety mean nothing to this manufacturer of weapons, security robots, and futuristic healthcare, as they'll happily force their employees to work with faulty machinery, caring little about whether they get riddled with radiation or not. Worst of all, they will provide no help whatsoever to their workers, even when they're on the brink of death, letting them nowhere near the medical technology that could save their lives. Look, either you go in there right now, or I'll find someone who will. And you can go clean out your locker. Come on, man. No, no. That's the deal. When a company's motto is intelligence plus armadine equals citizen purity, you know something's not quite right. I'd be looking for someone to take a job for me. But no one here had the clothes! Number 8. The Daily Bugle. The Spider-Man franchise. Could you pay me in advance? As a photographer, you might think an excellent picture of Spider-Man is front-page material. Jeez. However, J. Jonah Jameson, the notoriously ill-tempered publisher of The Daily Bugle, will write off even the best work as crap and shortchange you. They're crap. 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 Mega crap. I'll give you 200 bucks for all of them. That seems a little low. If you're one of his staff writers at the tabloid newspaper, he'll have you twist the news to suit his anti-superhero stance, or just completely dismiss you in one of his trademark tirades. Mr. Jameson, this is page six problem. We have a page one problem, shut up. J.K. Simmons portrays the mustachioed madman in the Sam Raimi-directed trilogy, and he dominates every scene he's in. Where were you? Photographing squirrels? You're fired. Chief, the planetarium party. Oh, right, you're unfired, I need you, come here. If you're a timid character like Peter Parker, Jameson is going to make your life hell. Genius. What, are you looking for a raise? Get out. Number seven, Wonka's Chocolate Factory. Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. <laughs> Little surprises around every corner, but nothing dangerous. Don't be alarmed. This confectionery production factory may seem like a candy-filled wonderland to Charlie and the other kids with a golden ticket, but to anyone of working age, it's a health and safety nightmare. 
Before you enter the premises, you're forced to sign a contract warning you about things like floods, fire, frost, and frippery. And then, once you're in, it gets even crazier. Come with me, and you'll be in a world of pure imagination. There are human-sized tubes, trippy boat trips, and a boss totally unconcerned by the damage he causes. There's no earthly way of knowing <laughs> He's singing. which direction we are going. Meanwhile, the poor Oompa Loompas are the downtrodden workers, charged with cleaning up after one of their master's dodgy creation's misfires. And although their songs are relatively upbeat, you'll never see one of them crack a smile. Now that we think about it, maybe they're forced to sing. Oompa Loompa Doompa Dee Doo, I've got a perfect puzzle for you. Number 6. Papa Song Cloud Atlas One 24-hour cycle in Papa Songs is identical to every other. You may think your job sucks because it takes over your life, but any 9 to 5 is a cakewalk compared to being a server in a Neo Soul fast food restaurant with 19 hour shifts in the year 2144. That's the sort of existence the fabricants in this dystopian South Korea suffer through. For the next 19 hours, we input orders, tray food, vent drinks, obstacle condiments, wipe tables, and bin garbage. All done in strict adherence to first catechism. Fabricants are clones deliberately designed to be of subhuman intelligence. They're denied any exposure to the outside world and are forced to religiously honor thy consumer, with the only prospect of escape coming after their collars are stamped with 12 stars. 12 stars meant an end to our contract. How did you feel when you watched one of your sisters ascend? Excitement. I was happy for them. But envious as well. Here's the kicker though. The end to their contracts and their subsequent salvation, known as exaltation, is all a lie. Instead, every clone is killed and churned up to be food for the countless other slaves still trapped by the corporate-like society in which they live. They believe they are going to exaltation, but they are not. I'll say it. Number 5. In a tech, Office Space Hello, Peter. What's happening? Working in this monotonous office may not be as life-threatening as other workplaces on this list, but it comes scarily close to replicating how unfulfilling a real-life office job can be. We have sort of a problem here. <laughs> yeah, you apparently didn't put one of the new cover sheets on your TPS reports. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry about that. I, I forgot. Mm. Yeah. It's unclear what Inatech actually does, which is perhaps a comment on how pointless this line of work can be. And yet, big shot executives like Bill Lumberg still patronize the Milton Wadhams types just quietly getting on with their work. It would be really great if you could just sort of take care of the cockroach problem we've been having in here. No, that's really not my job, and I, I haven't received my job. Okay. You can hardly blame Peter Gibbons for robbing the company and destroying a printer, but maybe Milton burning the whole place down was a bit much. Although, we suppose that's what happens when you try to take a man's stapler. Okay, Milton. And, oh, no, it's not okay, because if they make me, if they, if they take my, my stapler, then I'll, I'll, I'll have to I'll set the building on fire. Number four, the Union Repo Men. Mr. Smythe, I'm from the Union. In 2025, through a miracle of medicine, it's possible for diseased organs to be replaced with synthetic versions of the real thing. These life-saving substitutes don't come cheap, however. When you fail to make a payment, people with sharp knives, known as Repo Men, will arrive to take what is owed. Can you scout? Give it up, buddy. What's the magic number? Not today, Jake. Wrong answer. Gone are the days when working in repossession meant taking back a TV or furniture. Now you have to cut open a living being and remove a part of them that's likely crucial to his or her survival. Understandably, some of the people with artificial organs put up quite a fight. And after being covered in someone else's blood for the fifth time that day, you might begin to rethink your career path as a repo man. What's that? Live up. What are you, hanging out at AA meetings? Number three, Virtucon Industries, the Austin Powers franchise. For 30 years, number two has run Virtucon, the legitimate face of my evil empire. 
If you're employed by possibly the most incompetent evil corporation ever put to film, it must be hard to drag yourself out of bed to work on one of Dr. Evil's terribly thought out plans. Here's the plan. We get the warhead and we hold the world ransom for one million dollars. Without the doctor at the helm, number two manages to make the company insanely profitable. But things go wrong when the head of the organization inevitably returns from cryosleep. This is demonstrated by Dr. Evil's penchant for wasting all their hard-earned cash on terribly impractical bases that put every expendable henchman at risk. Most notably as a result of steamrollers, no! ill-tempered sea bass, and sharks with frickin' laser beams attached to their heads. You mean I actually have frickin' sharks with frickin' laser beams attached to their frickin' heads? Oh, and don't ever tell Dr. Evil how dumb he is either. You don't want to get fired. Why must I be surrounded by frickin' idiots? <laughs> Number two, Bendini, Lambert, and Locke, The Firm. Bendini, Lambert, and Locke is just a small Memphis firm, 41 lawyers. But we're a large family, so we're careful. After studying for years towards a career in law with aspirations to make a real difference, it must be disheartening to find out that your first job is riddled with corruption. We've been investigating Bendini, Lambert, and Locke for four years. No lawyer has ever left your law firm alive. Not only do the employees of this small boutique law firm turn a blind eye to organized crime, but its crooked workers actively aid the mafia in hiding huge amounts of cash in offshore funds. As an employee, BLNL also closely monitors your life, bugging your home and making sure you stay on their side. If we run, they find us and it gets Ray killed. By the time you find this out, the firm has already greased you to the point that exposing the company would not only end your career, but also put your marriage and life in danger. That's just the kind of stuff the FBI could use for coercion, Mitch. So you watch yourself. It's gotta be pretty tough to keep your integrity when you're working at a company that's totally devoid of morality. If we ever have to talk to a third party, then I know everything. Right down to the penny, pound, franc, and Deutschmark. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. Re, for lack of a better word, is good. Greed is right. Greed works. This is uh, Stan Fink, one of our most experienced and skilled technicians. He'll be handling your case tonight. Hello, friends. My name is Peter Whelan. I am your employer. Lunar Industries remains the number one provider of clean energy worldwide due to the hard work of people like you. Safe trip, and yon yigeseyo, and goodbye. Number one, Soylent Corporation, Soylent Green. Soylent Green, the miracle food of high energy plankton gathered from the oceans of the world. How far would you go to protect the human race from almost certain extinction? That's the moral dilemma you're presented with as an employee of this company, which produces a miracle food block capable of feeding humanity in a world ravaged by industrialization. Now, when I was a kid, food was food. For our scientific magicians, poisoned the water, polluted the soil. The problem is that those chunks of sustenance are actually made from people. You gotta tell them! Silent Green is people! So the big question is, do you reveal the truth to the world, putting the survival of our species at risk, as well as your paycheck? Or do you keep quiet and allow the elite to keep living their lavish lifestyle? Either way, the film is set in 2022, so we might not have to wait too long to find out. Quick energy, yellow, soil, and made of genuine soy do you agree with our list? Which movie businesses would you walk out of after a week of work? All umbrella staff must wear their identity tags at all times. All radiation badges will be collected at 5 p.m. Thank you! For more heavenly top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Now all I got to say is you want it, it's gonna be crumb snatching, coaching, practice. When the Grim Reaper steps up, what the hell you gonna do?